Today we're going to talk all about horns. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I got to tell you something. I somebody wrote in, actually two people wrote in and said, "You remind me of somebody, Mr. Rogers." <laughs> all I need is a cardigan sweater and I'm already old, so I know I'm the Mr. Rogers of audio. Oh god help me. Well, Hi, boys and girls. <laughs> anyway, Massimo, uh, love that name, in Italy, of course, writes, Hey, Paul, uh, this is from Italy, from Tuscany, actually, and, and you have a great channel, and I love people explain complex things in a simple way. Well, thanks, Massimo. I'm a trying. As an audiophiliac, sounds slightly illegal, I'd like to know your thoughts about the horn-loaded speaker. I switched from Infinity RSK9 um, to Eclipse Palladium P37, and this one sounds better in my opinion. What about a mix between old gear, preamp, and the new... Well, well let's stick to one question here. Horns. Well, first off, let's define what we're talking about when we refer to horn loudspeaker. You, you've, you've all seen them. They are physically different looking than a box speaker, though most of the clips are box speakers and they have a horn built into them. But we know what a horn is. A horn is like this. And this amplifies my voice by directing the sound focusing the sound in the same way that a lens kind of does, right? So years ago, when Edison and others first developed the, the phonograph, all they had was a small mechanical disc uh, that was directly tied to the phono needle. Okay, so, so, so just imagine a, a needle. Picture a, a, like a, a thick sewing machine needle and attach that to the, uh, uh, take a tin can, cut off the top of it, weld that to the end of your needle in such a way with a little cantilever coming out, and then mount that whole mess uh, in such a way that as, as the needle moves back and forth, it, it moves the, the, the top of the tin can. I'm, I'm using very poor words here because a top of a tin can is very thick and hard to move. But imagine a very thin form of that. As the needle wiggles, it's going to wiggle that metal membrane. As that metal membrane is wiggled, if it's trapped around its edges, it makes like a drum. And that drum is going to reproduce whatever the wiggles are and from the needle. Now, if the needle is in, in a, 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 the groove of a record, and that record has, let's say, the human voice, then that little tin can, just like the ones we used to use with string between two cans, and you talk into it, and the, the, the movement of the tin can would go down the string and reproduce itself on the other end of, of the tin can. You remember that. Well, you may not remember that <laughs> back in my day, <laughs> um, but that's how all that kind of worked, right? Well, the problem is that's not very loud when you do that. And you could put your ear right up to the moving diaphragm from the needle. So what Edison did, he said, I need an amplifier. Well, you know what? Electronics hadn't been invented back then. They knew, you know, they had Ben Franklin running around with kites getting electrocuted and laden jars filled with you know, batteries that you know, would shock the shit out of people, but they didn't really have much in the way of electricity. They were just starting out with the light bulb. So there was no way to amplify it except with an acoustic amplifier. And an acoustic amplifier is da, 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 a horn. And a horn, and, and you can imagine how that does that, it flares out. So you start with a small amount of sound pressure moving here, and it amplifies that. In the same way that um, uh, people long before with, with before hearing aids used the opposite. They used a horn that would narrow down and focus the sound into their ear so they could hear better. If you, if you cup your ear uh, or just, you know, look like Alfred E. Newman, 
um, you you can amplify the sound going into your ears in the same and so this is just the reverse and that so that's called an acoustic amplifier or a horn and if you put a driver not just replace what we had talked about with the needle moving the metal membrane with a compression driver or some kind of small speaker and you put it on there that small speaker becomes very efficient now years ago Klipsch and other horn manufacturers had to do this because the amplifiers of those days had very few watts they didn't have much power they were all tube based because we hadn't invented transistors yet and people weren't going to use these huge transmitting tubes they they had smaller tubes and the, we were putting out five ten watts well how do you make a lot of sound with only a very few watts you use the edison trick of the acoustic amplifier the horn so that kind of thing has has lingered on and the advantages of a horn are efficiency Horns, you put a very few number of watts into it, become very loud. Why do we care about that today? Well, because of headroom. Now, an orchestra can play up to 130 dB if you measure it right at the orchestra. That's a lot, and this is on a logarithmic scale. So in order for even a 100 watt per channel amplifier to be able to, to effortlessly hit peaks of 130 dB, peak music power, you have to have a very efficient loudspeaker. And horns do that very well. But what's wrong with horns? Well, the reason I'm not a big fan of horns, never have been, is because they color the sound. Unless you have multiple horns, each one keeping out of this kind of horn sound. You see what it's doing to my voice? As I cut my hands, I'm cutting off all the high frequencies. I'm narrowing it down to a very specific set of frequencies. If I don't try and have the full range of my voice through this tiny little horn, I can get away with it and make a very efficient device, but it's very difficult, and horns, to me, always sound a bit colored, so I kind of stay away from them. But hey, you know what? <laughs> Plenty of people love them still today. I think there are easier ways to do it and better ways to do it, and when we produce our loudspeakers, the, the new PS Audio loudspeaker line, hopefully we can show it to the world in 2018, will be as efficient as a horn, but without all the colorations of the horn. We'll get to that at some point. Great question. Thank you. Bye.